software update 2022.28.1 came down to my new Tesla Model Y yesterday morning and then I took the Model Y out for a bit of a drive. So this morning I got notification of a new software update for the car. I did have the same version as I had in the Model 3. That's still on the old version. This came 2022.28.1. And the few things that have come with this one are alternate routes. So when you program in a navigation, it's going to give you options depending upon uh, traffic and so on. Now apparently that's only been released to a few people. I don't know, that's what I have read. But I look like I've got that. Theatre mode, where you can, instead of having, if you're watching Netflix and something you need to go in to set the aircon or whatever without using the app, you had to get out of that, do what you wanted to do, go back into it make a phone call I think is an option. Now you can do exit out of full screen and it will play continue to play down here um, a small version whilst you do something else. So you minimize it um, and uh, then you can put it back. The other couple of updates here uh, Sonic the Hedgehog I don't tend to play games um, Cuphead no idea what these are and cat quest well there you go i don't know what they are but that is 2022.28.1 so i'm going to be trying out this alternate routes right now so i've just entered um an uh, address here i just picked an address in rockingham so um, if we go back to here, you'll notice it's given me this route, 15 minutes, or that route, same length of time, but it's given me options. So that is something brand spanking new. I don't know how many people are actually going to get that, but it does give that option. So now I'm going to uh, program in somewhere that I actually want to go. And there's no options because it's basically up the freeway. And we're just going to go for a drive using autopilot and see how we fare. So the freeway is literally just up here. <clears throat> we'll go up the freeway. As I said before, I've got enhanced autopilot, which is the half price version, which gives me everything full self-driving does except stop on traffic control which is traffic lights roundabouts and stop signs and city driving on city streets automatic driving well yeah um we don't have that in australia yet anyway so we're not missing that um so we shall wait and see so it will change lanes, so if I say change and jiggle the steering wheel, it will move across. And as you notice, it's got the auto headlight thingy on. It's now wanting me to change lanes to overtake. And it is possible to turn that off by hitting that. During the day, it really doesn't make any difference whatsoever. At night, it just blinds oncoming traffic. It's not the best. And I've got a feeling that the legality of using the high beam in Australia, uh, it may be in contravention. You're not supposed to use high beams on uh, built in built up areas I believe um, but if you do know put it down below in the comment section so a lot of people have complained that 
the ride on the um, Model Y is a bit rougher. Well, the tyre pressures on this were set at 45 psi, and I have noticed no difference in the ride quality whatsoever. I'm getting very little road noise, very little. Now the road surface here is actually quite good on this freeway. If you're headed south from here, um, it becomes a little bit rougher and you get a lot more road noise, so efficiency is not quite as good. Uh, but up here, efficiency, um, since I last charged, I'm doing 161 watt hours per kilometre, since new 169 watt hours per kilometre, which, uh, now that's not too bad, I've only done 100, 130 k's in it so far. So as I should, I'm keeping a hold of the steering wheel and still paying attention because it's beta software. I, so many people are complaining, but it's beta software. It's not full-blown, full self-driving. I know there's been a lot of arguments over whether it should be called full self-driving or not but it does say beta and when you put it on the computer and you go in and you set it up it keeps saying beta 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 so driving up the freeway it's gone up to 174 175 watt hours per kilometer oh it's coming down now to 170 because we're going downhill slightly i believe but we'll just wait and see what that turns out to be because this trip that I'm doing is 90% on the freeway so we'll get a rough idea of what its um, capabilities are with the average energy consumption when I got this vehicle it had about 80% charge which actually was quite good I wasn't expecting it to have that much in there uh, and this has got approximately a 60 kilowatt hour battery 60.1 60.5 not entirely sure um, and usable is probably about 57.5 give or take but it does tend to vary so when I charged it up I put in the battery accepted 14 kilowatt hours and that brought it up to 100% um, I believe. But according to the app that I have, it took 16 kilowatts from the grid, only 14 made it into the battery. So two kilowatts, that's around about 12% give or take um, loss. It shouldn't be that much, but it was only a small charge. So I'm going to watch that and see what the average loss is over a period of time. Because normally a lot of people stay between 5 and 10%. We shall see. Um, my app will analyse it for me and let me know. pleasantly surprised with the comfort level. The seat's the same as what's in the Model 3 and I always found that that uh, offered a nice amount of support and was very comfortable. This same seat, just as much comfort, but because the seat is raised up a bit on those risers, uh, the seating position is slightly improved because your knees are bent a bit more so I feel quite comfortable. Added to that with the higher driving position, it is a definite improvement on the Model 3. And as I've said, 
the um, a lot of people complained about the uncomfortable no it's just not any difference that I can notice compared to my model 3 which is still for sale by the way um, I intend to be doing a few tests on this car over the next couple of weeks I'm going to run the battery down a bit and then I'm going to take it to a V3 supercharger and whack it on and see how much charge it will take. I believe it should take 170 kilowatts. I have heard 200, but I don't think it will do that. I think it's only 170. We shall see. Uh, there's a version 3 supercharger north of Perth, where I am. Uh, it takes me about 35, 40 minutes to drive there. So I'll do that once the battery gets down a little bit. At the moment, I'm sitting on 78% because I charge it up to 100% just to see. And then when it's got down, I'll get it to charge up to 100% again and see how long that takes. Uh, it's going to be interesting what it will take. And I'll try and work out a, um, a graph on the charging current and its state of charge so that you know if it's at 10% it'll do 170 um, at 20% 150 and so on so we'll get a, a curve for that and uh, and see because I know when it gets up to 99 to 90 to 95% the charging um, current really drops off and we're getting down to you know 20 kilowatts uh, going into the vehicle so we'll give that a go once I get it down to 100. Um, it'll probably be a few days before that will happen. The distance, I'm at 78% and it's saying 337 kilometers, 78%. Uh, when it was full, it was saying 436. I don't believe that. I think it's going to be closer to about 370. If you look at, if we look at the um, current energy, it's doing 148 watt hours per kilometer, which is pretty damn good. And that's since I left uh, 13 minutes ago, 21 kilometers traveled. Um, hello, I've got to go over here because I'm going off. And the car just reminded me. <laughs> so 148 um, since the last charge, 155 since I've had it, 166. I'd be very happy with the 166 because that would give about the 370 or thereabouts kilometer range, which to me very reasonable so the car is now coming up to the turn off I've only got enhanced autopilot but it still indicates and turns off without me doing anything so there we have autopilot saying I'm not going to be navigating for you so I'm going to turn it off because I'm coming up to traffic lights on the off-ramp and I have to turn left and notice that you can still move this you can still move this I like it there I think that's the best place for it this morning, just as I was editing the video, 2022.28.1 uh, arrived for my older Model 3. And it didn't have the three game updates, nor did it have the navigation option of providing alternate routes. So it does appear that it's only going to special people, me. And after the run up and back down the freeway, the efficiency of the car came out at 151 watt hours per kilometer for the trip. And the car 
was sitting on 161 watt hours per kilometer since new or a, it's done about 200 kilometers so if it's a usable 60 kilowatt hour battery then that would equate to a real world range of 370 kilometers and that's quite a reasonable usable distance with a bit of spirited driving obviously that will be a bit less and with careful driving you could easily get 400k and i know 400k is quite possible as the two people that who went around australia in opposite directions from perth um one of their legs they had to do 400 kilometers and they did it so it's possible there'll be some more trips charging curves etc coming very soon thanks very much for watching don't forget click that like and subscribe button down below it costs you nothing and i'll see you all soon Bye.